The Forest has entered public alpha on Steam for a modest price of $14.99 recently. Being a huge fan of both horror and open world games, I was dying to give it a try. Players start their forest experience with their plane crashing in the middle of nowhere, surviving the disaster as a mixed blessing because players regain consciousness just in time to see their son carried off by cannibalistic natives. From there, players need to flee from the aggressive mutants, build shelter, and try to survive by hunting, gathering, and possibly taking the fight back. Maybe. Someday. Conceptually, The Forest is rock solid, and for an indie title, it looks fantastic, though it will tax even the toughest of computers. I managed to build a few shelters, I scavenged through the remains of other human settlements, I even tried my hand at farming. I was highly unsuccessful. Every time I played the forest, it wasn't long until the creepy natives found me, and no matter how far I ran or hid, they always ruined my day. But still, I was determined to thrive, because a lot of the forest is a trial and error experience. The first time you pass out or get knocked out, you will wake up inside the mutant's cave. If you manage to escape, you get another chance to live out in the wilderness. If you die again, it's game over. The forest is still very much an alpha build. You can get a beautiful experience, but it's fraught with bugs. Visually, terrain will awkwardly pop in. Clipping is a large problem, as I found myself walking through a lot of the terrain, especially in caves. And while building and crafting, my cabins always floated in the air until they were 100% done. I had an issue in one game where enemies became complete cowards or totally unresponsive, so I took the time to get up and close to some of the uglier baddies. There are some problems with the sound effects where enemies apparently screamed at me, but nothing came out of their mouths, but that was probably equally creepy. And there is a massive issue right now where I simply cannot save the game, which means every time I start the forest, I need to go through the plane crash scenario over and over again. Also, the mutants appear to be able to run on the bottom of the ocean without fear of drowning. I discovered this when I was trying to hide from them on an abandoned boat. They never left me alone while I was on board, but I found a new hobby to pass my time. Anyone care for a seagull? Aside from the graphical and audio glitches, the game needs some further refinement. Gigantic resource-heavy traps cannot be reset, nor can they be removed or torn down to recycle the resources. They also, for the most part, don't appear to do much good against the mutants, as many will simply walk or jump right through them. I did manage to catch one of them in my traps, so I turned him into an effigy. Personally, I can't wait until many of these game mechanics and bugs get some refinement because what I played here gives a lot of reason to be cautiously optimistic that the forest won't become just another green light disaster. But, as I stated before, the forest is conceptually a home run, and it's very easy on the eyes. For most gamers, I'd recommend waiting until a more polished version of the game is released, one where a save functionality is working, and perhaps a few more crafting options are available to the player. If you're the patient and forgiving type, and can fight through the bugs, the forest can still give an unforgettable experience unlike anything seen before in video games.